And I hope that each of you in every part of town will join us again tomorrow at this same time. As usual, we'll have something that will interest everyone. Goodbye. Okay, we're clear. Good show, Patty. Take a break, everybody. Rehearsal for tomorrow's show in an hour. Patty? Yes, Robbie? Are you and Sam going to screen that film? Yes, we are. Lou should be here with it any minute. I think he's in the studio now. Morning, Patty. Morning, Lou. Great show this morning. Thank you. Did you bring the film? Right here. Good. Robbie? Yes, Patty? Would you take this film and set it up for a screening, please? I certainly will. Thank you. I've talked to our program director about your ideas, Lou, and I hope the film will convince him that we can do some worthwhile Red Cross demonstrations on my show. I hope so, Patty. Good enough. I think he should be here any moment. Hello there, Sam. Good morning, Patty. May I introduce Mr. Lou Schoenberger, who is the public information chairman for the Red Cross chapter. And Mr. Schoenberger, Mr. Donaldson, who is our program director. Mr. Donaldson, glad to know you, sir. How do you do, Mr. Schoenberger? You're with the Red Cross full-time? No, Mr. Donaldson, I'm a volunteer and do most of my Red Cross work in my spare time. Although my boss is so enthusiastic about the Red Cross himself, he does let me off the job to keep an appointment as important as this one. Lou's with the assembly plant that moved in here a year ago. He edits the company newsletter, and he's done a terrific job recruiting blood donors and also setting up first aid classes for company employees. Really? And you still have spare time to do your work? Well, I hardly look at it as work, Mr. Donaldson. I like people, and I like to do things for people. So my Red Cross work is what you might call a labor of love. I believe in it. I see. Well, there is a need for volunteer work. I admire your enthusiasm. Now, Patty has told me something about your idea of running demonstrations on her TV show. And I don't know whether it's a good idea for television. Now, don't misunderstand. Our station is very public service minded. We frequently use your Red Cross spots. Some of our employees take part in Red Cross activities. But you see, for Patty's show, we've got to have something which will appeal to people in every part of town. And so you can see that I'm a bit well, skeptical. Well, Mr. Donaldson, if I may, that every part of town is exactly the reason we're here with Patty, because the Red Cross, too, works with people in every part of town. And to use an old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, I'd like to show you that film right now. Well, gentlemen, I think the film is ready for screening. Shall we go into the projection room? All right. You realize, of course, Mr. Donaldson, that these scenes are just short clips. But as you watch, I want you to notice uh, particularly that this is a type of activity the Red Cross is engaged in at all times and involves all kinds of people. Now, as we watch, I will explain each of the scenes. Okay, Robbie, roll it. This is Kathy Thompson, and she's a very lucky little girl. Last summer, she nearly drowned in a backyard wading pool. Fortunately, a milkman discovered her in time and was able to revive her with mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration. He'd learned it in a Red Cross class. In the classroom, instructors and pupils don't make actual mouth contact, but they come close enough to learn how to do it. The important thing is to get the victim's head tilted way back to help keep the air passage open. Well, there's a little more to it than that, of course, such as the proper jaw position, how to avoid air leakage, and, uh, depending on the size of the victim, how hard to blow. These additional steps can be clearly shown on television, and we know of many lives that have been saved because someone saw such a demonstration, even as simple as this one, and had the idea of what to do in such an emergency. Needless to say, the Thompsons are mighty glad their milkman was prepared for an emergency and knew what to do to save Kathy's life. prepared for emergencies can mean a lot in other ways, too. These scenes show why Hurricane Carla caused the greatest exodus in modern history. 
where she would strike was so unpredictable that Red Cross disaster plans were activated along 800 miles of coastline. Knowing this kind of devastation was possible and knowing uh, the human problems it would create, thousands of Red Cross volunteers worked around the clock ahead of and during Hurricane Carla so that emergency shelter, food, and clothing could be given to over 300,000 people forced to flee their homes. As always, medical and nursing care is a part of Red Cross disaster services. Fortunately, there are thousands of wonderful nurses like this one. In addition to disaster duty, they also serve as volunteers and chapters, teaching free Red Cross classes in care of the sick and injured and mother and baby care. The training, skill, and dedication that they bring to the Red Cross is indispensable and the people they help are deeply grateful, especially the victims of disaster. And disaster plays no favorites. It can strike in any part of town, in any part of the nation. Because of the news value of disaster, everyone is fairly well aware of the Red Cross's role in meeting human needs in emergencies, providing shelter when and where it's needed. But the part that the Red Cross plays in recovery hardly ever gets the same attention. Yet for individuals and families, it's probably the most important. When families have insufficient resources to enable them to get back on their feet and are in need of assistance, they can bring their problem to the Red Cross Disaster Relief Headquarters. There, individual attention is given to each family's problem. Perhaps household furnishings need to be replaced, a home repaired or rebuilt. Perhaps occupational tools or supplies need to be repaired or replaced. This fishing boat, damaged by Hurricane Carla, was repaired and new fishing nets were bought so one family could remain self-supporting. Even their fishing shack, a total loss in the storm, was replaced with a trailer so it could be moved out of the path of the next storm when and if it comes. Spraining an ankle can be very painful. It can also be serious if not given immediate attention. So when it happens away from home, as it did to Mrs. Hill, our banker's wife, on vacation last year, this highway sign proved a real blessing. It told them there was a person nearby who was trained in first aid. also knew the highway first aid station would have a medical directory for the local area so they could get to a doctor right away. So even though Mr. Hill had always supported the Red Cross, he's now promoting the payroll deduction plan as a good way to help keep the Red Cross strong and as a leader in getting other influential people in the community enthusiastic about Red Cross services. Mr. Hill had learned firsthand that everybody in every part of town can benefit through the Red Cross. He made sure his son and daughter took a course in swimming and small craft safety so they'd be safer during their hours of recreation. His son Jim even went on to become a water safety instructor.
Maybe you know Hetty Armour. She's the widow out on Elm Street who brought up her grandson, Ted, when his parents were killed in an automobile accident. Ted's in the army now, and the way Hetty looks here, you'd think she never had a sick day in her life. Because a few months ago, Hetty was in the hospital. Red Cross blood saved her life. Red Cross volunteers helped in many ways to make her stay more comfortable. And it was a Red Cross home service report to Ted's commanding officer that cleared the way for this reunion. But I think it's safe to say if it weren't for the Red Cross, she might not be tending her flowers today. Well, what do you think now, Mr. Donaldson? Call me Sam, Lou. Okay, Sam. I had no idea there was so much to the Red Cross story. You know, with all the men entering the service, there ought to be some way of letting them and their families know what the Red Cross can do for them. Well, Sam, there is a way that our volunteers contact service families all the time to advise them on Red Cross services. But reaching more people on TV would help avoid a lot of misunderstanding. Well, that I couldn't agree with you more, and it's a wonderful idea because about 38 cents of every Red Cross dollar is spent to assist servicemen, veterans, and their families. Is that so? Well, I always knew about the Red Cross being involved in the emergency phase of disasters. But your disaster preparedness angle is something more people ought to know about. Look, you're stealing my lines now, Sam, but I'm glad of it. And don't forget about the really big Red Cross disaster story, recovery. I don't want to bore you with more statistics, Sam, but the major part, about 85% of all Red Cross disaster expenditures are used in this rehabilitation work. And as you know, all Red Cross aid to disaster victims is an outright gift. People receive assistance on the basis of need, not loss. So altogether, the Red Cross is spending millions of dollars a year, and it's important to let people know how their contributions are being used. It would be a fine public service. Now, about the classes you said the nurses taught, uh, what did you call them? Care of the sick and injured and mother and baby care. Yes. Well, it seems to me that something on that order ought to fit Patty's show very well. I certainly think it would. And you can also get into first aid and water safety. We can do a great many demonstrations, both in the studio and outdoors. That'll be very helpful and interesting to everyone. I'm sure Patty would enjoy it. Well, this will take a lot of planning. Lou, will you be available to help us? Yes, indeed I would be, and so will all the other chapter volunteers. Well, that's fine. You know, I have a feeling people will actually learn some basic things just by watching the demonstrations on their TV sets. Many of them will, Sam. And another important thing is people will be more fully aware of what their Red Cross chapter is doing They'll know about the services it has for them and will be motivated to participate more actively. We need to get through to as many people as possible and let them know that the Red Cross is not an impersonal charity organization that's always helping the other fellow. We want to show them that the Red Cross is contributing warm, human, useful services to our community and that everyone can benefit in every part of town.